Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York City. I'm here with Cadence today for part two of our video for photographers series. In this series, we're gonna talk about how we can use the photo gear we already have, that can shoot video, of course, to get some extra work or to do some extra art, basically shooting interviews or moving portraits, as I like to call them. In this one, we're gonna talk about camera position and kind of how we set it up. Number one, let's talk camera position. So. When we're interviewing somebody, you know, we, we look, when we're shooting photos, this is probably a good method as well, but we, we sometimes think about how high or low the camera should be. With an interview, you almost always want the camera to be roughly at the level of their head. So either just slightly at eye level or slightly below or slightly above, depending on how they're gonna move around, but definitely not high or low. You wanna keep it pretty much at the level they're at. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it should be there. Typically, I wanna use something like a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. This allows me to be just a few feet away from my subject. A interview is a conversation, right? So I want to be close so it feels natural. It, you know, not everybody that's gonna sit in front of you for an interview is experienced or comfortable in front of the camera. This makes it easier for them. They're not looking 10 miles away at you down the other end of the thing. You also wanna move your lights Unlike photography, we actually wanna back our lights up a bit. So this three foot light here, it, for a portrait, I probably would move in even closer, right? The rule in photography is usually as close as you can get it. But with video, we want a little bit more coverage because they're gonna be moving, right? And we don't want their exposure shifting. So we wanna back the light up a little bit more so we don't have as much fall off, unless we're dealing with somebody that, again, is gonna stay exactly at one spot and you're doing something very specific. But again, for a standard interview, back it up a little bit further than you normally would. So I talked about how the lights were set up in the last video. I'm gonna come over here and turn off the light that's on me so everything looks right. I turned down the back light a little bit because I kind of like it to be a little kind of neutral as opposed to blown out. And I've got something that I like. So we can see through the camera. Now, number one, if this was, let's say Cadence was gonna be, give a speech, what I would do is I would center her in the frame and give a little bit more space around her. Because it's an interview, what we wanna do is center her to one side. You can ask the subject, you know, which side they prefer to look. I didn't give her a choice because we're shooting a video and I need space over here. <laughs> but typically you could ask them, do you have a side? If you know that, if you have time. Put the light on the side they're going to look towards. That way they're looking into the light, they get nice bright light on their face, nice even light. That's the simplest way to do it. And, you, and then you can kind of work your way, you're gonna stand behind the camera but not hide behind the camera. This allows me to look up here and see my monitor so I can make sure everything's working, I can see my audio levels, and I can see, not my audio levels, but her audio levels. <laughs> right now I can hear my audio levels because I'm talking, but you know, basically what I'm talking about. Because generally in an interview, you're not gonna record your own voice, right? You can have just the subject recorded. We'll talk about sound in a future video, but you wanna make sure your level's good, the light is good, make sure that they've got space to move. Now, speaking of this, you have two options here. Well, three really. You could just use the monitor on the back of the camera. I tend to think they're a little bit small, for me anyways in my vision. So if I'm looking at Cadence, I'll have to like really side eye to look down at the little monitor. If I have a nice big monitor that's more or less at her level, I can just kind of look up really quickly and see it, right? It feels really comfortable to look at. So I like a monitor, these can be had very inexpensively. Again, I'll put a link in the description. What I normally use though would be a recorder. A recorder is gonna allow you to record in log, it's gonna give you better quality, it can run record in hard drives. Why am I not doing that right now? Because I'm using it on my other camera that's recording me. So a recorder generally uh, can be found with a monitor. I like the Ninja 5, again, I'll put a link to it, and I would use that here instead, but either thing works. Now, even better, if you have an art director or you know, a HR person or somebody else in charge of it, you can actually do both, right? I can go to the recorder and then out to a monitor. I can go out to a big monitor if I really wanted to, but I don't recommend having the subject be able to see the monitor while you're talking to them. That will be very, very, very distracting. I agree. Yes, Cadence agrees. <laughs> okay, so keep those things in mind. An interview is a conversation. You wanna be relatively close to the person, but you wanna leave them space around to breathe, if you will, so use a slightly wider to normal lens. Give them space on one side that they're looking towards, right? Make sure that you're standing on that side and that's where the light is. Everything will feel more natural that way. I will put a link to Cadence in the description. I'll also put a link to all the gear I'm using. You can join my Discord, that's also in the description. So many things in the description. Go ahead and like the video, ring the bell, do all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you soon.